Video Lecture 9C, Drawing Lewis Structures, A Systematic Approach. In a previous lecture, we've seen Lewis structures for very simple molecules. However, if we want to draw Lewis structures for more complicated molecules, such as the citric acid molecule shown on the right-hand side of the screen, we need a more systematic approach. The following steps outline a more systematic method for determining Lewis structures that in the, for most cases allow for each non-hydrogen atom to have an octet or eight electrons surrounding it. In addition, each hydrogen atom will have two ne electrons next to it so that it has the same no electron configuration as helium atom. This method is also useful because it accounts for all multiple bonds. That is, it will reproduce double and triple bonds within the molecule. This is one of many methods for determining Lewis structures. You may use any method that allows you to feel that, that you feel comfortable with. This systematic method will work for drawing Lewis for drawing Lewis structures for neutral molecules as well as polyatomic ions, which are simply molecules that carry a net charge because they are missing or have extra electrons. The first step is common along all, among all methods used to draw Lewis structures. This is that we need to know the total number of valence electrons in the molecule. This is important because a Lewis structure has to represent all of the valence electrons for all of the atoms in the molecule. To figure out the total number of valence electrons, we first start by figuring out the number of valence electrons for each atom that appears in the molecule. For main group elements, the number of valence electrons matches the CAS group numbers. These are the Roman numerals followed by A's for the main group elements in the periodic table. For example, all elements in the group in group 6A have 6 valence electrons. If molecules have charges, we need to subtract or add electrons appropriately. If the molecule has an overall positive charge, this is because it's missing electrons. Therefore, we must subtract one valence electron for, from our total electron count for every unit of charge. For example, if our polyatomic ion happens to have a positive one charge, we will need to subtract one electron from the, from the total valence electron count. If our molecule has an overall negative charge, we need to add one valence electron to our total for every unit of charge. For example, we will, we will, draw, an we will draw a, a Lewis structure for the carbonate ion, which has a minus two charge. We will need to add two electrons, therefore, to the total valence electron count for the carbonate ion. Our systematic method has a second step that many methods don't have. However, this step is crucial for determining the number of bonds that we will draw in our Lewis structure. This step has us count the num total number of valence electrons each atom will have when it's isoelectronic with a noble gas. This is very easy to figure out. Every hydrogen atom wants to have two valence electrons just like helium. Therefore, we will count up two electrons for each hydrogen atom. For each non-hydrogen atom, we will count up eight valence electrons, since all non-hydrogen atoms want to have noble gas configurations, or eight valence electrons. For example, if we were to count up, do this count for the water molecule, we we'll count eight electrons for the oxygen atom and two electrons for each hydrogen for each hydrogen atom. 
This would give us a total of 12 electrons for this step. The valence electron count for water would be eight. Six electrons for the valence for the valence electrons for oxygen, and one electron each from each hydrogen atom. The third step is to subtract our totals from step one from our total in step two. This gives us the number of electrons that are shared between atoms in the molecule. For water, we would subtract 12, the number we got for step two, from eight, the number, total number of valence electrons in water to get four. Four electrons are therefore shared between atoms in the water molecule. The fourth step is to divide our number in step three by two. This gives us the total number of bonds to draw in the molecule. This, this essentially tells us how many lines we will need to draw in the Lewis structure and accounts for all double and triple bonds as well as well as single bonds. For water, we will divide our four shared electrons by two to give us two bonds. We know from the previous lecture that the water molecule has two lines drawn in it. There are two bonds in, the, in our mo water molecule. The fifth step is to draw a skeletal structure for the molecule. There are a few guidelines in doing this. Hydrogen and fluorine atoms are always terminal, or they're around the periphery of the molecule. Therefore, you will never draw a hydrogen or fluorine atom in the center of, an a, of a molecule. Other than this, we should put less electronegative atoms, with the exception of hydrogen, in the center of a molecule while more electronegative atoms are placed in terminal positions or around the outsides of the molecule. After we arrange our atoms, we'll draw in the bonds based on the number that we get in step four. The remaining electrons after we draw our bonds should be placed as lone pairs, especially around atoms that do not have an octet. The goal is to use all of the ele valence electrons counted in step one to draw the structure, ensuring that each atom has an octet. If we are drawing the Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion, we should draw brackets around the Lewis structure and place the charge of the ion in the upper right hand corner. We will now apply these rules to draw a Lewis structure for the carbonate ion. We're going to write or draw the Lewis structure for our carbonate ion. The first step is we want to count up the total number of valence electrons that we will need to represent in our Lewis structure. The carbonate ion has one carbon atom. Carbon is in group 4A, therefore it has four valence electrons. We also have three oxygen atoms. Oxygen is in group 6A and will therefore have six valence electrons. We will multiply this six electrons by three for our three oxygen atoms. Carbonate ion has a minus two charge, meaning it has two additional electrons other than the valence electrons coming from the atoms themselves. So we will add two electrons to our valence electrons count, bringing us to a total of 24 valence electrons. Our second step is to count up the number of valence electrons that each atom would like to have so that it is isoelectronic with a noble gas. None of our atoms in the carbonate ion is hydrogen. Therefore, each atom would like to have eight valence electrons or a full octet. 
So we'll take this eight electrons and divide it and multiply it by four. Giving us a total of 32 electrons. In step three, we'll subtract from 32 our 24 valence electrons so that we'll to determine how many electrons will be shared in our Lewis structure. This gives us eight shared electrons. Our final mathematical step is to divide, to divide the number of shared electrons by two, which gives us the number of bonds we will draw in our Lewis structure. This gives us four bonds. The next step is to take our atoms and arrange and put them in the proper arrangement. Since carbon is the least electronegative atom, we will want it to be in the center of the molecule. Therefore, we'll surround our carbons by the three oxygen, or carbon by the three oxygens. Our next step is to fill in our four bonds. We, we know that eight electrons will be shared between the atoms. So we start it by filling in a single bond between all of the atoms. We will place our fourth bond as to make it one carbon-oxygen double bond. For now, it does not matter where we put that fourth bond. So we'll place it on the left. So far, we've used eight electrons, two electrons per line drawn in the Lewis structure. We still have 16 electrons to use, and only our carbon atom has a full octet. For the oxygen on the left, we need to add two more electrons, two more pairs of electrons so that that oxygen has eight electrons around it. For the central ox carbon oxygen bond, as well as the bond to the right, we will need to add three more pairs of electrons. This is a good place to stop and check. We want to make sure that we've used all of the valence electrons we've gotten in step one. So we have four lines, which gives us a total of eight electrons, two lone pairs on this leftmost oxygen, which brings us to a total of 12, three pairs of electrons on the central carbon oxygen, the central oxygen, which brings us to a total of 18, and then the final six electrons gives us a total of 24. Therefore, and all of our atoms have an octet of electrons, or eight electrons surrounding it. The carbon and all of the oxygens as well. Our last step is that since this is a polyatomic ion, we represent that by putting our whole structure in brackets, and placing the total charge in the top left rightmost corner. This is only done when you have a polyatomic ion. This demonstrates our systematic method for drawing Lewis structures. You're encouraged to practice this on more molecules.